Hello, and welcome to a Blood and Pigment Nationality Review. I'm Joseph. I'm Guy. And I'm Dan. Today we are looking at pirates in Blood and Blunder. Pirates do not appear as their own nationality, but instead are categorized as a type of unaligned. Pirates have always been the scourge of the Caribbean. In the 17th century, these were all well-armed and well-trained sailors using current or expired commissions to rob from their government's enemies or any ship they happened to come across once those commissions were revoked. What really sets these pirates apart is they not only took ships, but they also ransacked cities at the point of a sword backed up by accurate musket fire. Blood and Plunder is a pirate game, right? Yes, it is. Well, sort of. I think it's more of a age of colonies, age of empires game. But pirates are a big part of that. But there's only, as of no peace beyond the line, three factions of the 30-some in the game that are can be really classified as pirates. And that's what we're going to look at right now. Not to disagree with you, but I'm going to disagree with you. <laughs> English buccaneer and French buccaneer and even Dutch privateers are a type of pirate. Spanish Corsairs, too. The three factions that we're going to be talking about today, which are Brethren of the Coast, Logwood Cutters, and Pirates, are notable in that they are multinationality pirates. All scum of the nations scraped together on one ship, right? <laughs> yes. Hey. <laughs> They put away, they put aside their differences and decide that they just want to get all the money and steal all the prizes. <laughs> Looking ahead to a, I can't resist, raise the black. Pirates are going to come into their own a little bit more on the game, have their own chapter and a couple more factions to more uh, fully fill them out as they come into center stage for a few years in the early 18th century. You just do that to tease me. Yeah. <laughs> but shall we look at the three factions and uh, talk a bit about them and what they have in common here? We should, starting with the Brethren of the Coast. The Brethren of the Coast is a brotherhood of people that were in the Caribbean, usually English and French, but also Dutch, and a smattering of other people. And they kind of, in being away from the powers of Europe for so long, they started looking at themselves as a, a group of people with common cause, which was to pillage against the Spanish. Hatred for the Spanish has bound them together. Yes. As a, a faction in Blood and Plunder, they are notable in that they can be on land or sea. They don't need ships. They don't need muskets or cannons. You can kind of do the one that you want. They get a free mulligan, which is useful in the game. It saves you a fortune. And they also are very notable that you can take English units, Dutch units, French units, all as core. And there's even the Spanish marineros in there representing them. They have a lot of different ways to play. They're one of the better factions in the game with lots of different commanders that you can do to kind of make it your own. Even two people playing Brethren of the Coast are going to play differently. Yeah, I like those options for so many commanders. That's a really strong point for the Brethren. Yeah, I usually play the later half of the 17th century where it's mostly the French and the Dutch running around. That's what I like to run. The mixture of the Dutch hardcore seamanship with French musketry is just, you can't see my chef's kiss, but I'm making a chef's kiss. <laughs> the second faction is similar in a lot of ways, but it's more focused on land combat. This is the logwood cutters. Uh, logwood was a fairly valuable resource found in the New World. It was a dye, actually. It wasn't like, literally logs of wood, although it was wood, but um, fairly valuable resource that the Spanish claimed as their own, but the Spanish were always trying to drive these English and French guys out. They would just land somewhere and barbecue pork all year long and cut this, wo this uh, wood and sell it for a pretty good price. Not a bad life, but the, <laughs> the Spanish hated them. Um, Definitely better as a land faction. They don't have access to all those um, cannon crew sailor units as core. They just have freebooters, filibustiers, and engages as core units. So they're definitely focused on musketry. Um, they're a pretty fun faction. Not very reliable necessarily because they might be unprepared. They might be drunk or they might be determined. 
Uh, you get to roll a dice, a die before each game, and you might have a wildly <laughs> different result. So you never know what these guys are going to be doing if they're comatose after, and drunk after their pork and wine feast, or if they're determined to keep their outpost here against the Spanish trying to drive them out. So fun, fun faction, uh, more limited, not as many core units, but the one notable core unit is that uh, Engage. It's a four point model. It's inexperienced, but it has a six shoot. They're a fascinating model. They also have this uh, weird rule, timid, where if somebody around them gets shot, they might get scared at seeing somebody else get killed. Um, it's a hard rule to remember, actually, because it's not. It doesn't trigger on their activation. I like this uh, faction a lot just because it's funny. I hate having my guys run around drunk, but it is entertaining. If you plan for it, it's it's pretty good. Yeah. They also have, if they are the attacker, they get to discard their activation cards, a uh, mulligan, and draw a new hand as well, but they don't have any bonus or anything. Nothing special with them at sea. But I like I like them, but they aren't the most reliable. They aren't a great tournament list. <laughs> <laughs> Just call them what they are. They're pirate lumberjacks. They embody the best of both worlds as far as pirates and lumberjacks. If pirates and lumberjacks are your core interest, this is perfect. <laughs> And then we come down to the actual faction called the Pirates. So they're mainly a sea faction. Land is possible, but not recommended. They have the same unit list as Better Than the Coast, but they just lack the capers as core unit, which is why we recommend don't go on land with them. They have the False Colors rule, where I believe it's a 7-up It's a seven up turn 1, where you can basically knock it shot from about 12, 12 inches away. It's cool, but it's kind of unreliable. But, like Better in the Coast, you have many ways to play. You want to play English and French, you got that covered. You want to go all French, all Dutch, you can do, you can do that. <laughs> it is, it's almost the same, just that they don't have as quite as many commanders. The one notable commander, because he's specific to the Pirates faction, is Gene Hamlin. And he's special because he's got Vendetta against everybody but Natives and Unaligned. So if you're fighting one of the major nationalities, you get the Vendetta rule, and I don't think anybody else currently has that. Enemy of all mankind, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. He's got Ruthless, too, which is great for pirate factions. But yeah, they're they're fantastic. I play, if I'm playing casual, I bounce between these guys and Dutch Privateers. I love the Pirates faction. False Colors, it's gimmicky, it's great, great when it goes off. When it doesn't, it's just kind of a waste. But it's it's fun. I enjoy them, at least. They're not a bad faction at all. I love that False Colors rule, too, but it's so hard to make happen it's actually good when you're playing a amphibious scenario then you're automatically the attacker if you take a ship what you do is you take your d10 and you find the corners and you just file them down a little bit then they'll get your rolls going <laughs> sounds pirate piratical to me just a little so we've talked about the what we define as pirates in blood and plunder so now let's talk about why else you would want to play as pirates in this game being a pirate game, there's always satisfaction in playing as pirates. Whatever looketh cool, right? Yeah. You gotta raise the black at some point. Or or the <laughs> flag of no quarter at this air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think these are great options for uh, playing at sea. They're pretty flexible factions as far as what models you bring. If you're an English player, it's pretty easy to slide into these factions. Buy a few French models or buy a couple of Dutch models. And then you can kind of make your English faction a little more diverse, more interesting. Uh, this is kind of, I think it's a good faction to move into from another faction. I think it's kind of hard to buy for to start with because you kind of want some of everything. But those are my top reasons. And those are all great reasons. This is a good faction if you're already collecting English or it's a good nationality if we're naming it Pirates and Brother of the Coast and Logwood Cutters are, if you're already collecting English or collecting French, or even collecting uh, Dutch with a lot of capers or Enzeliden. But once you start as pirates, it's harder to move into the other factions because you, you're you going to have to buy a bunch of militia. If you do land stuff, yeah. Yeah, if you do land. At sea, it's easy to slide into a navy <laughs> from yeah, pirates. That's that's what I did. I started playing Dutch and then slid into pirates. I played Dutch because I thought they were cool. I think we mentioned it in our Dutch video. But no, I never heard of these guys. Did some reading, watched the movie Admiral, and went, huh, these guys are pretty cool. 
So I played the Dutch, and then of course, you know, after whomping as the Dutch, I went, oh look, there's a black flag over there. I kind of want that, and I was able to just take all my toys over to there. Yep. Um, the unaligned box. If you happen to get that as your starting point for the game, and you can play as the as the pirates and the brethren of the coast, really easy and pretty well as the logwood cutters. Although you won't have models for that engage unit. Nope. And the marineros are going to always be the odd man out in that box. Yeah. Yeah, you can use them as a different sailor unit if you want. Marinos aren't the best sailor unit. He lighted. <clears throat> Sorry, I coughed there. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing that is that this faction is not as, or these factions are not as interesting to play in land games because you you don't have as many options. Yeah, a lot of militia units or army units, they have your militia uh, model and your standard musketeer model and maybe a skirmisher and maybe some native allies. These lists, well, they have some good variety for sea. When on land, you basically have your sailor model and your musket model, either the filibuster or the freebooter. And they're less three-dimensional, in my opinion. I've played them quite a bit on land. Played through a whole campaign with them. That's right. <laughs> and there's some variation you can do, but they don't have the diversity that some of the land focus factions do. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Which is funny because historically they did a lot of stuff on land, a lot of stuff on land. So many raids. Yep. They're still decent, but they just aren't as I like to fiddle with lists and make lots of different weird lists and make focus on one element. And there's not as many possibilities in these lists as there are on some of the land focus lists. Not to say you can't play them, but you'll end up with less interesting things. You they're not it's not that they're bad though. You will usually if you buy a lot of expensive musket units that are good at shooting, which freebooters and flibusés and buccaneers and veteran freebooters, these guys are good at using a musket. You will find a nice spot in cover where you can see an enemy and your unit will spend probably half of the game in that one unit shooting every turn until the opponent's dead. That isn't really it's that's fun. What I just described is is fun. It's called winning. But <laughs> if you do that for 10, 15 games, that one strategy of finding a nice spot in cover about 14 to to 12 inches away from an enemy or less, it you don't have as much variety. <laughs> Did I say it right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that hits the nail on the head. Yep. But for C, this is uh, kind of everything you can ask for. So, Yeah, and lots of variety at C. You can do a mix of everything at C. It's kind of the opposite as the land problem in that you can do muskets on a boat. You can do muskets on a ship. You can do a boarding party on boats. Boarding parties on a ship. You can do cannons, you can do, a, and then and then mixes of all of the above. And then even mixes where you like, you want to make it look like the list, like you're going to try boarding, but then you spend the whole game at range on cannons because, ah, you didn't notice that. I This is actually a cannon list. He lied in. <laughs> all right, I coughed again. <clears throat> See, they are, the, they are the good. One reason to play this too is you get to do the light in and flea buzzers and on the same ship if you want. That's one of my favorite strategies. Overpowered. <laughs> Everybody likes to stare at the filibusters and they don't pay attention to the Zeliden who are pulling their pistols out from under the cannon just waiting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody should have a pirate list they can pull out if you play Blood and Thunder. This is kind of the heart of the game. The Buccaneers, English and French, kind of, you can lump them in with these guys. So you owe it to yourself to play some sort of pirate list during your time in Blood and Plunder. I think that about wraps it up. Do we have anything else to say about these glorious, glorious factions? No, that's a good piece. For reviews on all three of these factions, written reviews with some more detail, you can uh, look up bloodandpigment.com and search for these Logwood Cutters or uh, Brethren of the Coast or Pirates and find, I think Dan wrote a couple of those. I think I wrote the Logwood Cutters, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I wrote the other two. The Pirates is a good one. Go read it. <laughs> Articles about all things Blood and Plunder over at our blog. Check it out there. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel as well. 
We'll be aiming to put out a video every Monday. Subscribe and ring the ship's bell so you can stay notified of our uploads. And as always, keep your dice ready at the wind at your back, yarhar.